Joining me now, nobody better to talk about this, absolutely nobody better. Joining me is Rick Perry, former Secretary of Energy and, of course, former Texas Governor. Rick Perry, welcome back to the show. You know, Rick, of all the bad stuff embodied in this, it's the fa- to me at least, it's the fact that we are now back to depending on OPEC, which is not our ally, they are not dependable. We used to call the tune, now we're letting them call the tune again, and that infuriates me. What a great monologue. Uh, You laid that out as well as I've heard, and I hope the American people get to hear that time and time again. Thank you, Rick. This didn't need to happen. Uh, We had this country sitting in a very, very sweet spot, so to speak, uh, and uh, praying at the altar of the environment uh, is costing the American people. You you said it right just a moment ago when you said that uh, the Democrats are going to pay at the polls uh, while the American people are paying at the pump. Uh, and, And that's, this is about economics. Uh, and supply and demand still matters. Uh, the idea that somehow or another uh, you could go uh, placate the, the woke left with all their environmental nonsense and the blather coming out of this administration uh, on, the, uh, on the climate side and not have an effect. I mean, there's a cause and an effect here, and it's powerful. You sent the message to the fossil fuel industry, Mr. President, that you hate them. You're going to do everything you can to uh, stop them in their tracks, to stop drilling, to stop uh, the American innovators. And you did it. Uh, I'll give you that. You, you, you really slowed this fossil fuel industry down in America, and we're paying a huge price for it. Didn't have to happen. Uh, we could have sent uh, th- th- this president could have allowed the oil and gas industry to continue on. And uh, we might could have gotten him to read Alex Epstein's book, Fossil Future, uh, and he would have had a better idea that the environmental left is pulling the wool over his eyes and the rest of the people that are following that. So this is, a, this is clearly uh, a, a condition that we brought on ourselves And you made a really good point about the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, Larry. Uh, He has used it for political purposes, not for the reason it was set up, and that is for a hurricane like we've got, uh, like we've had. And, you know, it's really going to be interesting for me to see in hindsight, did or is the, uh, the American people being affected negatively because our strategic petroleum reserve uh, has been depleted so much for the political reason that we don't have enough to get it out into these, you know, Florida, into South Carolina, and in the states, Georgia, that were hit by uh, Hurricane Ian. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff going on here that didn't need to happen. Poor public policy coming out of the Biden administration. And Listen, I, people are going to say, oh, you know, it's OPEC's fault, bad old OPEC. If we had not put in these crazy policies, we could have kind of thumbed their nose, uh, our noses at them and gone on about our business. But yeah. no, uh, we've got to play this uh, political woke game, and it's costing the American people dearly. I mean, it's just that's the key point here. The thing that just drives me crazy. So you, as energy secretary traveling the world, traveling to the Middle East, dealing with the Saudis and the other Gulf states and the oil producers, um, you had the whip hand because of what we were doing at home. You had the whip hand because our spigots were open, because Trump uh, uh, kept them open and uh, provided, by the way, important tax cuts for all American industries, including the uh, petroleum, oil, and gas industry. So we were reinvigorating and cutting red tape, which made it easier to drill and to refine and so forth and so on and uh, and make pipelines. Now, I would gather uh, the current energy secretary, Granholm, is not feared, not respected, not really paid any attention to. I mean, all Biden's minions went to the Middle East. Biden himself went to the Middle East, and they got nothing for this. We have lost respect, and more importantly, I guess, or equally, we have lost security. 
They are running the oil show right now. We were running the oil show. And yeah, we can blame the OPEC if we want. But as you said, the reality is this is a homegrown problem. This is because of Biden's bad policies. All he had to do, right, was let a thousand flowers bloom, right? Keep the fossil industry booming and then build up the renewable industry. Give everybody equal, you know, tax cuts, lower tax rates, more depreciation. He didn't have to shut off the fossil spigots. He didn't have to do that. He was sold a bill of goods by the climate war uh, global climate warmers. That was just the killer here. And now look where we are. Yeah. Well, it is. And, and again, November is going to be a real... Um, a real moment in time, I think. Uh, the Democrat Party um, going to pay a huge price for this, and they should. I mean, um, you know, people who voted for uh, Joe Biden, thinking that he, you know, this guy's going to bring America together, and he's done just the opposite. He's divided this country like never before. And we need leadership, and hopefully the uh, Republicans will come in in January uh, and right the ship and really start sending the message to our allies around the world, listen, we're going to be back uh, delivering that fossil fuel, that energy that you're going to need. They're going to be expanding small modular reactors uh, using American innovation and showing the world, here's how you have base load power, allowing people in Africa to flourish, uh, to, to not get the message like... Uh, Mr. Kerry sends out there is, listen, you're just going to die. We don't care about you in Africa. You're not going to have fossil fuels. You're not going to have uh, nuclear power. You're not going to have a base load to improve your way of life. That is a loser message, in my opinion, around the world. And the Republican Party needs to be standing up and talking about, we're going to allow for people to flourish around the world, American innovation, American fossil fuels, American technology. That's the message for the Republican Party. And you said it, the cavalry is on the way, and it's coming, and it's going to blow through the door on November the 8th. I mean, this, uh, this OPEC so-called October surprise puts this whole oil problem back on the front pages. That's the irony of this. And gasoline prices are, in fact, already edging higher. I mean, they're already very, very high on the West Coast, but this is going to affect the whole country. Rick Perry, if you were back as Secretary of Energy, what would you propose, or let me put it differently, with respect to the uh, House and the Senate changing hands to the GOP, what would you advise them to do? What would your guidance be right away? Well, obviously, you start passing some legislation that uh, Joe Biden would have to pass. I mean, things that clearly uh, permitting for pipelines, mm -hmm. for instance. I think that is so important for us to send the message that, listen, we're not going to let the uh, woke left stop these pipelines from being built in this country anymore. Uh, that, to me, would be one of the most important things they could do. Uh, you know, I think Manchin tried to do that, and, and for whatever reason, you know, he he decided to go with the uh, uh, that IRA bill uh, that was not a uh, inflation reduction act in any form or fashion. Uh, with the with the I, I guess the hope that Joe Biden was going to do what he said he would do, and um, anyway, long story short, is I think the uh, uh, permitting reform mm -hmm. to me from a, a energy standpoint would have as powerful an impact as anything that we could do. And sending the message of, hey, listen, you guys that are out there are going to put uh, your your resources to work. You're going to have pipelines to be able to move this around the country. So um, I think that's one of the most important things that we can do. And then stop any type of overtaxation, overregulation, uh, over litigation that, that's out there. Those are the, the three things that you have to have. Uh, to allow an economy to grow is don't overtax, don't overregulate, don't overlitigate. It's not rocket science. Rick, the Republican Party knows that, and I think that's what they'll implement. Sorry, Rick, uh, just 30 seconds. The next battle is the Biden administration wants to stop, curtail LNG exports. What do you make of that one? Just, uh, again, I don't know where they are getting their signals from. But it is as poor policy from a national security standpoint, sending the message to our European allies that, hey, 
sorry, we're just not going to send any gas over there. You're going to have to depend on Putin. What a disaster. Mm. Already is, I mean, Europe's in trouble. I mean, like serious trouble this winter. And we put Putin in a position to allow him to really use his energy as a weapon. Mm. And he is. And he will. Unbelievable. Anyway, Rick Perry, thank you. We appreciate it very much on this Always particular day.